The musical instrument you see here is a common variant of the modern European orchestral horn. Earlier versions of this instrument originated in France, which is why many people will tell you it is called the French horn. However, the type of horn most widely used today in bands and orchestras around the world is actually a type of German horn. German horns use rotary valves, while French horns use piston valves. To avoid confusion, professional musicians began referring to the instrument simply as the horn in the 1930s, and this practice was later endorsed by the International Horn Society in 1971. The earliest horns were not used as musical instruments, rather they were hunting horns used to call out signals. One popular variation of hunting horn was in the shape of a large loop because hunters could wear the horn over their shoulders for convenience. In the 16th century, smaller versions of the circular hunting horn found their way into the performing ensemble. By the 17th century, the bell end had been made larger and flared. The instrument became known to the English as the French horn. These horns were monotone, meaning they could only play notes from a single harmonic series. This limitation made it very difficult for composers to write for horn. Horn parts of this time typically called for a lot of high playing because there's a greater number of notes to choose from in the upper register of the harmonic series. For example, let's take a look at an excerpt from Handel's Water Music. Something else you'll notice about this excerpt is that the first and second horns are playing the same parts but one harmonic step apart. This was a very common compositional technique used up through the 18th century. Another challenge found in Handel's water music is that some movements are written in F and some are written in C. This meant that horn players actually needed to have access to two separate instruments, a horn in F and a horn in C. However, in 1753, a German musician by the name of Anton Joseph Hampel invented the means of applying interchangeable slides of varying length that changed the key of the horn. These extra slides became known as crooks, and they made it much easier for horn players to play music in different keys. Around the same time, Hampel developed the technique of hand stopping. This allowed horn players to play virtually any note by putting their hand in the bell in order to alter the pitch. Professional hornists also developed their embouchure control enough to further bend the pitch in order to play these stopped notes in tune. This completely changed the way composers wrote for horn. Composers in the late 18th century, like Mozart, began writing much more complicated horn parts. For example, let's take a look at an excerpt from Mozart's fourth horn concerto. You can see there is a lot more quick scalar motion compared to Handel's water music, and not all of the notes are part of the harmonic series, which means they require some hand stopping. However, one thing remains the same. The music lacks chromaticism and everything is mostly diatonic. But that all changed at the beginning of the 19th century when valves were implemented as an addition to the horn. The old non-valved horn became known as the natural horn and faded out of popularity, while the new valved horn much more closely resembles the horns we see in bands and orchestras today. For the first time ever, the horn was completely chromatic. This enabled composers to write much more freely and virtuosically. For example, let's take a look at an excerpt from the first horn concerto by Richard Strauss.
think it's really fascinating to see how instruments change over time and how these changes affect the way composers write for those instruments. Thanks for watching.